Today's video introduces assignment number four, responding to a complaint by motion. For the past three weeks, you have been looking at things from the perspective of a plaintiff's lawyer representing Craig Peterson. Now let's switch hats and look at things from a defendant's perspective. You are an associate in a Salt Lake City law firm. You are contacted by the general counsel of the New York Times who asked you to represent the paper in the libel suit filed by Peterson. Let's assume the firm has represented the Times in the past and you quickly determine there is no conflict to representing the Times in the Peterson lawsuit. What is the first thing you should do after you are contacted by the New York Times and told that it has been sued? The first thing you should do is obtain a copy of the summons and complaint. Usually, you will obtain a copy from your client, but you can also get a copy from PACER, that's P-A-C-E-R, which is the federal court's online system that allows electronic remote access to court filings. Once you obtain a copy of the summons and complaint, you need to answer four very important preliminary questions. First, when was the complaint filed? You need to know this information to determine if service of the complaint was made within 120 days as required by Federal Rule of Civil Procedure Rule 4. You can obtain this information from reviewing the electronic docket on the PACER system. Second, when was the complaint served? This is important because the date of service starts the clock on the time to respond to the complaint. Third, how was service made? If service was deficient under the rules, there may be a basis for a motion to quash the summons. Fourth, was a waiver of service requested? Under Rule 4, a defendant has a duty to avoid unnecessary expense and can be ordered to pay the cost of service if a waiver was requested and ignored or refused. Assume that the New York Times was served through its registered agent on August 24, 2013 and that no waiver of service was requested. When is a response to the Peterson complaint due? Come to your small section with the answer to that question. As you now know, Peterson has pled a single claim for libel. What additional questions should you ask your client, the New York Times, and why is the answer to this question important to the defense of the case? Come to your small section class prepared to answer this question and discuss it. Based on your readings, you know that the two ways the New York Times may respond to the Peterson complaint is by moving to dismiss the complaint or by filing an answer to the complaint. In your small section class, you will discuss the potential considerations in deciding whether to answer a complaint or respond by motion. Mowat identifies three potential motions under Rule 12. They are a motion to strike, a motion for more definite statement, and a motion to dismiss. Let's briefly review each of these motions. First, a motion to strike under Rule 12F. This motion seeks to strike from the complaint, quote, redundant, immaterial, or scandalous matters, period, end of quote. This is a non-dispositive motion, and if granted, the information is stricken, and the plaintiff is required to replead the complaint without the stricken material. In my 30-plus years of practice, I can count on one hand the number of times I have seen this motion made. I used it once in a breach of contract case where plaintiff gratuitously alleged that the defendant was an adulterer. If a Rule 12F motion is non-dispositive of the case, why would you ever make it? Mowat says you should consider such a motion when the complaint may be read to a jury, but in Utah and most federal jurisdictions, all pleadings are merged into a final pretrial order, which likely will describe the claims generally and omit the offending language. So, are there circumstances where a Rule 12F motion is appropriate? 
Come to your small section class prepared to discuss the answer to this question. Let's briefly turn to a motion under Rule 12e. Rule 12e, a motion for a more definite statement, seeks an order requiring a plaintiff to replead the complaint with greater particularity. This is another rarely used motion. Come to your small section class prepared to, one, discuss whether this is an appropriate response to the Peterson complaint, and two, identify possible circumstances where you might want to file such a motion in other cases. Finally, there are the various motions under Rule 12b, which are used to challenge the procedural or legal sufficiency of a complaint's allegations. There are seven challenges that can be raised by a Rule 12b motion. Come to your small section class prepared to discuss whether any of the seven grounds are an appropriate challenge to the Peterson complaint. In assignment number four, you are legal counsel for the New York Times. You are to draft a motion and supporting memorandum to dismiss the complaint actually filed in the Peterson v. New York Times case. The resource materials necessary for this assignment are found in the assignment instructions and other documents posted on TWIN. Two questions related to this assignment you will undoubtedly want to discuss in your small section are the following. First, may you raise factual matters outside the complaint in making your motion to dismiss Peterson's complaint? And second, may you attach documents in support of your motion to dismiss the complaint? Good luck and have fun completing assignment number four.